Hey, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. We're back at the home shop today, taking another look at this 66 Roadster. Now, even though the car is extremely original and virtually 100% complete, there were a couple of small things missing, and there are a couple things that you're gonna need a little more attention than just a simple cleanup. So in the past few months since we've had it, I've been scrounging around for some very particular parts. And so I wanna show you that, and I also wanna show you the things that came with the car, in the car, because some of that might give us some insight into how it came off the road in the first place. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of that. So one of the first things that I noticed when I, when I picked up the car, the boot, all the boot boards were pulled back and this, this cover was pulled back and everything was kind of jammed down in there. The tonneau cover was in there. We'll talk about that in a different video. But this panel on the side of the boot was off and kind of, you can see it's a little bit wrinkly. I've been trying to flatten it out for a couple months now. This was off, and there's really only one reason to take this off, and that is to mess around with the fuel pump. Now, another thing is that when I picked up the car, and you come over here, the air cleaner was off and out. Now, these, this is the original air cleaner assembly. What's real nice is it's just pulled out. This is the original condition. It still has the original bolts with the flat washer and the star washer. None of this stuff has been lost. And then here's the fiberglass plenum. Um, it still has the original washers and the original wing nuts. They call these mouse ear wing nuts. These are what they did look like originally. And of course, this is the 4.2 liter style. So it has the ribs in it. Look, there are some mouse droppings that just fell right out of it. So this was out of the car. Hopefully we don't end up with too much mouse damage in the car. I haven't seen any yet. So. First theory would be that something went wrong with the fuel pump. Now we know the car sat for a while, but maybe the engine problem had something to do with fuel delivery and Bill had taken the side cover off the boot there, mess around with the fuel pump. He's got these off to see what's going on with the carbs. We don't really know. While we're here, we'll take a look at we did get the original jack. This is it. It's the later style or earlier style. I'm not a pro on jacks, but this is the original jack from the car, and it has the handle built in instead of the separate little ratcheting piece. This is the original jack bag. It is as found. This is going to clean up beautifully. And then these are the original tools that I got. The tools are an interesting story. I asked the woman that I bought the car from about tools when I picked it up. You know, did you see any tools? They would have been in a bag, kind of like the jack bag, and rolled up. And she immediately was like, oh, I threw those out. I didn't know what they were. The bag was all mangled up, and it looked really junky, and I, I threw that away. But... I did pull some of the metal pieces out and throw them in the recycling bin. So here are the original wrenches and they, they're, you know, a little bit of surface rust, but they're still in beautiful shape. So all four wrenches are there. This wrench obviously is not an original wrench, but what's really nice is that, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we should get out of the sunlight. Or maybe we should get in the sunlight says made in west germany so i'm thinking that bill picked this up when the car was new over there or somebody stuck it in there i don't know but it just seems kind of ironic that this is in there so i kept that with it here's the original pliers and then this is the original knockoff hammer there would have originally been a piece of rawhide in here that's long gone and that's common not the prettiest I've got nicer original ones back at the shop, but this is the one from this car. And then what was very nice is that this, she actually walked up to me when I went to pick up the car and said, does this go with the car? The day before I went to pick it up, I drove an hour and a half to an older customer, friend of mine, who also had a German car, who I knew had one of these. Because if I couldn't get air in the tires, I was going to have to have a way to get the wheels off. 
And so I drove all that distance because I didn't see this when I went to look at the car the first time. And the minute I got there, she walked up and said, is this go with the car? This, of course, is the original knockoff tool for the German safety knockoffs. It is different than the later Series 2 and 3 style. You can see it has these slots where the that little knockoff thing goes in there. So that's that. So all of this stuff was in there. Um, we did manage to salvage some of the toolkit, and I have a big pile of original tools I've been saving for years at home, so I can fill that back out. But these are the original tools from this car. Aside from the few lost tools, this car was 100% complete when we picked it up, except for the missing radio console. There was something going on with the radio, and the console and the actual radio were gone. Now, if we look at the antenna, you can see it has this little winding of copper wire. This is the original antenna, and the antenna gives us some insight into what the original radio may have been. This antenna manually extends, and as you can see, it really goes up there. And this little copper winding section is a telltale sign of the car having possibly a shortwave radio. Because with a shortwave radio, you need a really long antenna, and this is a lot of times how they get around that. Now, another thing, if you come around here a little bit and look here, I'll show you something I've learned about antennas and, and radios. Most E-types, a lot of them had the radio installed at the dealer. It was a way the dealer could kind of make a little more money. They would order it without the radio and then install it there. You can always tell if an E-type radio is installed at the factory or the dealer by where the antenna is. Inside the forward bulkhead, there is a stack of reinforcing panels. And those panels have a common area where I believe there was an original factory jigging rod that you can, you have a straight shot about an inch, inch and a quarter in diameter looking right down. The factory knew that and they always put the antenna right there so that they could have these manual um, retracting antennas right there and it could go all the way down into the car. When the dealer installs it, they don't know where that is. They don't have some kind of mark. They probably don't even know that it is there. And so you'll see that, you know, we have a 67 outside. The antenna's up here. This one's over here. It can be anywhere in this area. But when you do that, and this one, of course, has this springy thing, you can't retract it down because you don't have that little hole to work with. You run into more metal a couple inches down. So... By looking at the antenna, we're thinking this was installed at the dealer and it was probably a shortwave radio because it's got the winding. And we know that the car was sold through a dealership in Germany. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. But while we're over here at the car, I wanna tell you what I found. It looked just like this, except these two little speakers were jammed up in here. This one was tucked right up in there and there was nothing holding it except the fact that the magnet was sticking it to the bulkhead. And this one was up in there behind the speedometer and nothing was holding it either except actually there was a little piece of wire wrapped like a twisty wrapped around the tube for the defroster. And then there was some wires coming over. The tack was pulled out like this. And over here, you can see right in the cubby box are all the mounting hardware for the tack. You've got a bulb that got pulled off. Here's the clock. Here's the clock adjusting cable, the little escutcheon for the clock cable. And so also all of these panels were out. And we'll show you that over there. And most of the hardware to put them back in, including the hardware for the radio console itself was all in the glove box. So you can really just picture Bill sitting in the car, 
un reaching up and unscrewing all of the stuff that holds in the tachometer and the clock and everything and just reaching over and sticking it right in the cubby box while he's sitting there and then unscrewing all of those panels shoving all the hardware in here and then just starting to stick these speakers up in there and never getting any farther than that so the radio and the console were the only parts of the car that were missing and weren't totally original and so finding out what went on there ended up being quite a mystery and a big learning exercise for me because I never really cared about radios. I was never really into radios. To start out, these are all of the panels that go up under the dash. This one goes under, well, above the feet of the passenger on the right-hand side. This goes just under the whole glove box area. And then these over here, this goes up under the feet on the driver's side. You've got smaller pieces and they're cut out quite a bit for all of the steering. And then these are the pieces that go up under uh, the steering column further out, basically under the speedometer and the tachometer. Quick little interesting story. When I mentioned that the tool, when I mentioned what the tools look like and Bill's wife was so upset that she had thrown those out. She insisted on driving down to their shop, which was about five miles away, getting these trash bags out of the dumpster and looking to see if the tools were in there because they had been clearing out things out of the basement. She brought those back to the house. We rooted through these trash bags. The tool roll and the missing tools weren't in there. But what was in there were these three panels. These two panels from the driver's side, which are actually aluminum covered in vinyl, and then this one from the right-hand passenger side, which is more of like a black cardboard. So luckily, we've got all of these. Now, these are the two little speakers that were jammed up in there. We talked about that. This radio was in a box next to the car. This is a 1960s Japanese Takai AM FM radio. You can see it's it's very vintage looking here. It's kind of cool. And it is oddly removable. And it's got this funny little key on it here. I don't know if you can see that. And that apparently goes into this slot here. I haven't even tried to pull it out. And this is removable. So with the fact that the radio was missing, this removable non-original radio was near the car and things were kind of torn apart also the top was replaced on this car sometime between 66 and 71. I started to have this theory that maybe while the car was at the barn it had been broken into and someone had stolen the radio which was much more common back then maybe they cut open the top stole the radio but I'm off of that now because everything, even though it's missing, was so carefully taken apart. The radio console was missing, but all of the little chrome screws and uh, little lock things that hold it in were all right there. So the first thing I needed was a new radio console, ashtray, all of that. I did get the ashtray. The ashtray was in a box with some other things. This is the original ashtray to the car. So I started mentioning to a couple of my friends in the E-Type community that I just got this car. I'm really excited about it and I'm talking all about it. And one of them said, I've got exactly what you need. It's sitting on a shelf outside on, in the second story of my garage. This is an original 4.2 liter Series 1 radio console in black in not perfect, but very good condition and matching condition for this car. I think when we clean this up and when we clean up the interior of the car, they're just going to match perfectly. This is all original material. Now, we don't know what this originally had. And this, this size of this indentation looks like a maybe a blanking plate. But it doesn't really matter. Um, this was what I needed. So I had my console problem solved. We have bought and sold a lot of E-Type project cars over the years and lots of parts. And I had two original radios sitting on the shelf. Now, I believe that this one 
came with a 66 coupe and you can you can come in and get close to the radios now you guys don't have to keep looking at me um i believe that this one came with a 66 coupe that we found a few years ago that was right hand drive it was one of these two that came with it but i'm pretty sure this was it and this came out of a box full of spare parts and um replacement parts this is a motorola am fm um, you, you can see, actually, uh, that car probably started out in England as a right-hand drive. It's got the long and medium bands on there. So this is almost certainly from that car. And I found out the bands are, are different. This radio was in a box, and we're getting closer now. This was in a box of parts that we got from a gentleman that had a lot of Series 2 cars. Kind of makes sense. This is a Blaupunkt frankfurt us and what the us means is that the am and fm bands are the range that they listen to in the us versus down here that's not going to work for you in the us and that's probably why that right hand drive car had this radio out of it and in a separate box but so this is an am fm frankfurt us you can see you've got a little color there and you know now i'm like a radio expert you can tell by the knobs that these are a little bit later, probably like 68, 69. What I determined was needed for this car was a Blaupunkt AM FM shortwave radio. And I remember from the Jag shop at, as a kid, when we used to part out a lot of E-types, that the AM FM shortwave was the radio. We used to get a lot of money for them, whether they worked or not, back then in the late 80s. So I put out a call on one of the JAG forums to say, I'm looking for a Blaupunkt AM FM shortwave. I got this radio, which is a beautiful, original Blaupunkt AM FM shortwave. It has the amplifier box, and that's how these would go. This is a, another, also a Blaupunkt Frankfurt US. You see that there? Everything about this was right. I was excited to get it. And then I started looking and all of a sudden I realized it wasn't right. I've seen other cars from Germany that had the Blaupunkt AM FM shortwave. See how there's kind of like a little cloudy section here between the numbers? Well, they have little lines. And then the knobs were just a little bit different. See how these are tapered? All right. So I started doing more research this is a Frankfurt US Z. The Z is a 6869 radio. So that's not going to work. That was when I started really getting into the radio research and trying to figure out exactly what I need. And I finally figured out that what I need is a Blaupunkt Frankfurt US X. AM FM shortwave. It is the most expensive and the hardest radio to get, it seems. And finding an original one was virtually impossible. I had been looking for months. So what I finally did was break down and buy a restored. It's not in there yet, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna I'm gonna use this or not, but I probably will. This is a restored Frankfurt X. You can see where it's got the little lines where the other one was cloudy. You can see how the knobs are not tapered. They're more straight. It's got these, um, see this one, this one over here has a little holder thingy on that secondary knob. Whereas these are just have the little slots in them. And then, so the only thing that makes this not perfect is that these knobs here are more typical of a Porsche 911, which is where a lot of these radios went. Now you can see this looks brand new. It's got all the stickers on it. I've looked at this very carefully. All the guts are original. And see, this is the original sticker from this radio. But it looks to me like when they restore these, they just take all the original guts, fix those, and put them in a new case. And that's why this case looks so shiny. Now, this is the faceplate that was typically used for these radios on an E-Type. 
So I've got the faceplate, I've got the radio, the knobs aren't quite right, but they could be. Now I've got to look at, okay, I've got my original material here. What am I going to do about that? Because it's still got the mark, but the mark is probably from a blanking plate. So that might not be incorrect there, but that's what is going on with the radios. So I'd rather have a perfect original unrestored Frankfurt X AM FM shortwave US. It's got to be just right. Um, but I think I'm there with this. So for now, this is what we're going to use to get this car back to the radio that it would have originally had coming out of Germany. Now the interior on this car is in great shape. It's all intact. And I think with some cleaning and rejuvenating products, we can bring this right back. But there are a couple of problems that are gonna need to be fixed. And one of them that you've probably already noticed is this door panel. This is all original here. This is the original door panel, and you can see where it has deteriorated and fallen apart, this, this cardboard. And I talked to one of my friends, and he said, I, you know, I don't know how you're going to fix that with that foam in there that always comes apart. But what's interesting is this for padding originally has like a thick piece of felt. See that felt there? All right. Here's your original plastic that was on the doors. A lot of people don't really know what this looks like in there because it's been so molested by so many people. But see, this got like a, a mold on it, but I think it is going to clean right up. But of course, there's not much you can do with the panel. So what I did there was I called my buddies at OSJI in Muncie, Indiana, and I had them send me just the cardboard backer with all the right holes in it. It's the right shape. And we will use this to restore the original door panel, but we'll use the original vinyl, that original felt. We'll use all the original clips for the chrome and to clip it on the door. So everything is original to the car except for this actual cardboard piece, which just deteriorated. And we may have to do both doors. We'll see. Now, another piece that is ripped beyond repair is the original shift boot. And miraculously, I found this in a box this summer. And when I got this car later, I remembered it in my, in my head and I went back to look at it. This is an original shift boot from a 65, 66. It just has that round hole. As you can see, it is dirty, but it is fully intact. It looks like it's been on a car. I don't know, but I think that we can rejuvenate this and bring it back to life. And as you can see, it's original with the thick rubber. Um, now, we know a lot of the parts that Bill replaced because he wrote it down. One of them was the voltage regulator. Here is the box that his new voltage regulator came in. Um, there wasn't a lot of aftermarket stuff then. You had to get the real thing in the box is the original voltage regulator that the car came out of the factory with. And there's the date stamp, 666. And this car came off the line in August of 66. So that is right in line. So that's really cool to have that um, it, with the Lucas box and everything. And then, all right, the last thing we need to look at are the other part of the interior that is a problem are the seats. The seats are original. Come on over and take a look. Um, these are the original seats from this car. That's the original leather. The leather is a little bit hard. It's not too bad. It does move a little bit. And I think we're going to be able to bring this all back. There is a guy who's nearby here. He's called the Die Guy. And he does a lot of refinishing of original leather for Ferraris and things. But what he cannot fix is this. This driver's seat has got some serious problems. Here, the stitching has come out. So that could maybe be fixed. But here, it has ripped along the stitching as a perforation. That cannot be fixed. So of the four surfaces, two bottoms, two backs, only three are restorable. The driver's seat is not but I really wanted to keep the original seats. So I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. Now, first, 
just wanted to show you this car was built in august of 66 it has the right seats of course for that car which is leather on the front and then this felt or i think it's called a moquette back and it's got that down here as well um it has the chrome hockey stick side pieces these seats do fold forward but they do not recline now i happen to have and i picked these up three or four years ago an absolutely perfect set of restored 67 seats now we're going for total originality with this car so i don't want to put these in here but what i will do is use these seats if i decide to drive the car around some and see how that goes i'll put these in there for that these are 67 seats they are identical to the 66 seats in this car except the back is vinyl instead of the moquette see that the sides and front are leather the back is a vinyl and see down here this is also vinyl but otherwise the seats are all the same they have the same leaning forward mechanism but don't recline okay 66 67 68 these are 68 seats and i just picked these up earlier this year um these are the same as a 67 except the mechanism has changed and now they fold forward but also recline i'd love to show you that but it's just going to be a big mess on the floor like this without them bolted down but this lever here see i won't be able to do it will allow them to recline now these seats have problems there's a rip here there's this has got problems here but ironically, the bottom of the driver's seat is original black leather and there are no rips and tears. It's a little bit stiff, just like that car. So what we are going to do is take this leather piece off of this seat and use it to repair that seat. That won't be original to the car, but it is original Jaguar black leather. So we've got a pair of seats we can use to drive it, which are these 67s. And we've got a pair of seats where we can use the bottom panel of the driver's seat to go ahead and repair the seats in this 66. So that's what we have planned as far as collecting parts, how we're going to go about repairing some of these things without affecting the originality. And, you know, our next step is to get busy cleaning and starting to repair a few things and that's a really big job so um stay tuned and that's what we'll get into next thanks for watching